This video is a continuation of a previous one we made about the Mandelbrot set. If you haven't seen that, I'd suggest watching it before watching this one. Everything will make a lot more sense. Let's fix some value of c. So let's fix fc of z, which is z squared plus c. I'm going to define a new set called the Phil Julia set for this polynomial. So what is the Phil Julia set? So the Phil Julia set is really similar in definition to the Mandelbrot set, but you want to be careful. We're fixing our polynomial here, right? We're only talking about one single polynomial. I've got some value of c. That's my polynomial. The Phil Julia set is the set of complex numbers z so that under iteration, again, this process of applying the function over and over again by the function, the, <laughs> the values don't blow up, to use your language. So I start at z, and I take this function, f, of f sub c, and I start iterating, and I see whether or not this blows up. So I'm not just doing it for 0 anymore. OK? I'm doing this for any value, any complex number. Zero is just like a starting point, though, isn't it? H Zero is a starting point, if you want. But this is saying that, OK, what if I start at a different point? Let's figure out if that thing blows up. And if that thing blows up, then I'm not in the Phil Julia set for this function. If that thing doesn't blow up at this different starting point, then that point is in the Julia set, in the Phil Julia set. Let me do an example, OK? So let's look at uh, this example of c equals 0, z squared. OK? Yep. The Phil Julia set for this thing is, turns out to be exactly the disk of radius 1 about 0. OK? The reason why this is the case is that if you're outside this disk and you start squaring something, well, you've got something bigger than 1 in the first place. If you start squaring it, you're going to get bigger. On the other hand, if you start inside the disk, you have something less than 1, and you start squaring that, well, you're going to get smaller. And so you're exactly not going to blow up. You'll, you'll be bounded under iteration by this squaring map when you're inside of this disk. That's a pretty simple one, yeah. OK, good. Well, that's the only simple one, <laughs> I'm afraid. Well, there's two simple ones, and that's one of the only two. So the rest of these things look like, more like the fractals that you're used to. But I can uh, sort of approximate what these things look like. So if, for example, you take c to be somewhere here, OK? Then what this Julia set will look like, so here's my little thought bubble <laughs> imagining the Julia set at that c. What this Julia set will look like is sort of this interesting, known as a rabbit. So it's a fractal, but it has these kind of this structure where the fractal bits are these little bunny ears. <laughs> and so on. So I can't draw you know, infinitely many of them, of course, but it's a fractal that looks like this. So this is for something like, say, c equals, um, I guess, like minus 0.12 plus 0.75i is a good approximation. So this is what the Phil Julia set looks like for this z squared plus c. Okay? We already drew this Phil Julia set for c equals 0, right? Um, if you wanted to draw a Phil Julia set for something like minus 1, again, this is something you can draw using a computer program, or there's tons of things available online if you want to try it yourself. This ends up looking like also a fractal, but it looks like it has some sort of, sort of structure, so some nice circles. So the fractal components here are sort of circular looking and so on. OK? And so let me draw one more example, though. If we look at the Julia set of 1, the filled Julia set of 1, we get something kind of weird. It doesn't look like one of these blobby fractal things, OK? What it looks like is just a bunch of points. <laughs> now, they kind of make a shape, but it's pretty, <laughs> my drawing leaves a little bit to be desired here. But, <laughs> but the point is that like, you get something really, truly different here. You don't just get one blob, one piece to this Phil Julia set. You get all of these separate disconnected pieces. And so it turns out that another way you could define the Mandelbrot set is by which of these two behaviors you get. When you draw the Phil Julia set for z squared plus c, do you get kind of one piece, one blob? Or do you get a bunch of disconnected 
pieces. So if you get one piece, one blob, you're in the Mandelbrot set. If you get a bunch of disconnected pieces, you're not. So everything out here will mm -hmm. give me bits. Yeah, we'll give you, and sometimes you can still see some interesting patterns. I mean, if you tried to do something over here, maybe you'll get some, let's uh, imagine over here what this might look like. You'll get some interesting like spiral behavior, but it will be very obviously sort of disconnected and, and, and not a blob. <laughs> so the weird thing about it, I mean, this just seems like some sort of strange phenomenon, but, but here's why it seems sort of interesting to, to look at is because what the Phil Julia set looks like for a given value of C is complicated, right? It's a lot of information. You have to figure out what happens under iteration to every point in the complex plane, right? But the Mandelbrot set says, okay, you don't need to know all of that information in order to know something about the Phil Julia set, in order to know something about this function. In fact, all you need to know is whether or not you're in the Mandelbrot set. And then I can tell you, oh, do you look like one of these? Or do you look like one of these disconnected things? So the Mandelbrot set is kind of a classification of the two styles of Phil, Ju Phil Julia set. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so, and of course there's other ways in which this is true, that the Mandelbrot set gives you information, but about, you know, that otherwise would be sort of infinite information that you would have to compute. And so, so the real power in the Mandelbrot set is that this one object sort of encompasses, in some sense, all or almost all of the, the dynamically interesting stuff, the stuff that happens under iteration for all of these functions, z squared plus c.